Hey everybody, this is Overkill here, and this is a bit of a test video. Um, I haven't announced anywhere that I was going to do this, so this is just completely out of the blue uploaded. Um, but I know that a good majority of my uh, 9,000 plus subscribers came from my uh, Total Warhammer lore videos. Now, sadly, I can't produce very much, if any, uh, Warhammer lore videos for you guys for fantasy. Um, but I know if people are here for lore, if they subscribe for that, and that's not what they're getting, I, I, I hope that they can enjoy some 40k lore. Um, so I've decided that on top of my gaming content, I want to start making Warhammer lore videos again. Because they were very successful, and that's where most of you guys came from that are even part of this channel. So hopefully you find a way to enjoy the 40k lore. I know a lot of people have subscribed because they wanted to learn about Warhammer before it came out. That's, you know, that's obvious to me. But hopefully you can enjoy learning a little bit about the other Warhammer universe because it is absolutely amazing. So this is my first test video basically. Um, if you guys show enough support, if we get say like 50 likes on this, uh, I will definitely delve deeper into the Warhammer lore, uh, the 40k lore rather. And I will um, go further into the Horus Heresy especially because the Horus Heresy is very popular right now um, with the release of the newest board game Burning of Prospero. So um, if if you know if you guys enjoy this video enough, I will delve deeper into the Horus Heresy. I will explain all of the characters that are mentioned in this video. Um, so yeah, a bit of spoilers. If you don't know much about the Horus Heresy, you probably won't understand this video very much. Um, so I do recommend you go and check out um, some wiki pages and stuff about the Horus Heresy just to learn a little bit more. But uh, if again, if this gets enough support, I will go through and uh, do videos on the different Primarchs, the different captains, and stuff like that. So uh, yeah, thank you guys for. Uh, sticking with me, and I hope you enjoy the video. The Battle of Istvan III, or the Istvanian Atrocity, was the start of the Horus Heresy and was fought between the Adeptus Astartes loyal to the Emperor of Mankind, the rebels of Istvan, and those traitors that swore fealty to Warmaster Horus. An Imperial expedition had assembled at the Istvan system consisting of elements of the Sons of Horus, the World Eaters, the Death Guard, and a contingent of the Emperor's children. Overall, over 200,000 Astartes were assembled for the operation. The Death Guard Legion received a distress signal from the former Imperium world of Isfahan III, which stated that the colony had turned away from the Imperial Truth and that the former governor Vardas Prowl was leading the rebellion. The assembled Imperial expedition was tasked with eliminating this threat. Initial skirmishes were fought on the outer system world of Isfahan Extremis, where the Emperor's children and Death Guard had managed to eliminate the enemy outpost. Horus knew that to have his legions fully under his control, he had to purge those he deemed too loyal to his father, the Emperor. So hearing news of a rebellious planet that needed military intervention was too perfect of an opportunity to pass up. After destroying the outposts around Istvan III, Horus decided to send his remaining loyalist squads and commanders down to the planet's surface, where nearly every loyalist in his four legions would perish. With the enemy forces blinded by the rapid destruction of their outposts, War Master Horus brought about the legions to hammer the rebel forces. A combined assault was assembled by the legions which invaded the planet, determined to remove the threat of the rebels. Due to incorrectly mapped locations, many of the drop pods that crashed at Coral City slammed into the city's towers which caused a delay in reinforcements as they were pinned in inaccessible locations. The Titan Diaz Irae was also present at the planet and made use of its mighty weapons to eliminate heavy enemy positions. Hundreds of Isfanian soldiers had assembled to fight against the threat of the Imperials. Though they lacked the genetically engineered nature of the Space Marines, they definitely fought against them with some succumbing to the unique weapon of the Isfanians. A more dangerous threat to the invading Astartes than the Isfanian soldiers were the War Singers amongst the rebels, powerful rogue psychers which managed to kill dozens of Space Marines. Vardas Prahl himself was killed by the Emperor's children Astartes Lucius, who took the name Lucius Eternal after the heresy. With those squads and their leaders that were known to be completely loyal to the Emperor on the planet, the War Master finally decided to initiate his plan. A number of starships had secretly prepared the Life Eater virus for deployment onto the planet. A signal was sent by Horus who informed his loyal troops such as the Princeps of the Diaz Irae of the attack allowing them to seal all doors to prevent the virus from infecting the crew. After which, the ships began to fire onto the planet itself. The assembled Remembrancer Order was present on the Vengeful Spirit while this happened. After Horus declared his intentions of taking the Golden Throne, his Astartes went about exterminating the Remembrancers. 
the virus itself devoured and destroyed hundreds of Astartes on the planet as their armor afforded them no protection from the deadly bioweapon, with even the rebelling Isvanians dying in the genocidal attack. All that was left was a sludge of dead organic matter, after which a single blast was directed at the planet which created a firestorm which scorched the world leaving it a dark dead planet. Overall, over 8 billion lives were lost on Isvan 3 from this attack. Despite his carefully laid plan, the loyal Astartes were not eliminated and many were warned of the betrayal by Saul Tarvitz of the Emperor's Children. This consisted of elements of the World Eaters, Sons of Horus, Death Guard, and Emperor's Children, who managed to find bunkers or other sealed locations to survive the firestorm. Once this was over, they began to take stock of their position. Horus himself was outraged not only at this, but that Angron, the Primarch of the World Eaters, landed on Isvan III without permission and attempted to fight against the remaining Loyalists. This forced the War Master's hand to fight against the surviving Astartes on the planet in order to not show weakness to his brothers and that he was committed to his goal. Seeing that they were betrayed, Captains Garviel Loken and Tarek Targodon of the Sons of Horus declared to the surviving Astartes of the 16th Legion that they were once again the Luna Wolves and marched to Prowl's stronghold where they dug in with their surviving members of the Emperor's children under Saul Tarvitz and combated against the traitor forces. While bringing about grievous casualties to Horus's forces, the defenders were dwindling rapidly due to their limited numbers. They had hoped to bring about a high number of casualties for the War Master and to delay him, thus giving the Emperor's loyal forces time to reach the Isfan system. They managed to repel wave after wave led by various commanders such as Lord Commander Eidolon, who was forced to scurry away after the loss of his chaplain Charmosian. It was believed that they would have been capable of holding off the traitor forces for some time. However, Lucius had grown to despise Saul Tarvitz and wanted to rejoin his legion. Using the slain chaplain's helmet communicator, he contacted Lord Commander Adelon and arranged for the betrayal of his comrades. Lucius himself had slain all the defenders at that part of the encampment, promising Adelon not only glory by defeating the loyalists, but giving him the head of Saul Tarvitz. Despite his boast, Lucius was defeated when Tarvitz had reinforcements forcing Lucius to flee back to the Emperor's Children Legion. While this was occurring, Garviel Loken and Tarek Torgaden snuck away in order to confront their former fellow traitor members of the Mornival, Ezekiel Abaddon and Horus Aximand. Despite a valiant battle, Torgadon was slain and Loken was buried under rubble from a titan's blast. The defenders were now too few, and Horus's patience had dropped to the point that he had ordered the Dias Aere to destroy the Loyas fortifications. Many more were killed in this action, leaving a small band of survivors. With great reluctance, Angron was recalled by the War Master, as were the other traitor forces who returned to their ships. This time, Horus planned to finish off his enemies once and for all. He commanded the great ships in orbit to begin bombarding the planet, which killed any remaining defenders, but somehow, Loken managed to be the lone survivor on Isvan III being found months later by a team of Astartes led by Nathaniel Garrow, who managed to escape the great betrayal aboard the Death Guard Forget the Eisenstein, along with 69 other loyal Astartes from Horus's traitors. Once the purge of his legions was complete, Horus began preparations for the next stage of the Horus heresy at Isvan V.